During ancient days, widows and children were often poor, just as Naomi and Ruth were. So Naomi is seeking to convince Ruth that as her mother-in-law, she has the right to play matchmaker between Ruth and Boaz. Naomi begins by asking two questions intended to convince Ruth to go along with her scheme. Naomi inquires of Ruth, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you so that you will be all right? Now, Naomi's question implies that she is about to do something intended to be good for Ruth. Security is important for Naomi. Remember, when she bid Ruth goodbye in the desert in Moab, she wished for her security. For Naomi, security for Ruth means getting her a husband. And given Ruth's loyalty to Naomi, it's hard to believe that Naomi didn't also realize that gaining a marriage for Ruth was gaining security for her. Naomi's second question makes it clear that Boaz is the one she is determined to secure for Ruth as her husband. She says, you realize that the kind man that has allowed you to glean in his fields is our relative. This statement is meant to justify her specific plot for that night. Naomi is well steeped in these Jewish customs, so she knows that Boaz is working in the thrashing room, removing weeds and debris from the harvest. You can also reason that she knew that there was celebration associated with the thrashing floor. Thrashing took place after the grain had been harvested. Naomi's plan was simple. Ruth is to bathe herself, put on perfume and a lovely dress, and then present herself to Boaz at just the right moment. And that moment being after he had eaten, after he had consumed sufficient wine to feel the effects of it, and after he had settled down in bed. Only then was Ruth to slip under the covers at his feet and await for Boaz to tell her what to do next. Ruth is persuaded to do as her mother-in-law suggests. The scripture says that Boaz was startled out of his sleep. Someone else was lying at the end of the blanket. And he asked, who was there? Now things aren't going exactly as Naomi has planned. Boaz has not told Ruth to do anything. He's just asked her, who is she? Looking at Ruth's actions and choices of words, we find that she obeyed Naomi's command in a way that would completely be honorable and consistent with her noble character. Because Ruth's response was honorable, Boaz immediately recognized her piety and responds accordingly. Ruth identifies herself as the maid of Boaz, choosing her words carefully. Humbly, she indicates that she considers herself totally unworthy of the kindness he has shown her, but now she uses terms which speak of a maid of a higher social strata, a class of maiden who could be considered eligible for marriage. Ruth modestly asks Boaz to fulfill his role as the family redeemer. In essence, she is asking him to marry her. Ruth understood that the provisions of the law for the poor and for the widows were a part of the protection God provided for those who seek the protection under his wings. And so it is natural for Ruth to look to Boaz for redemption and protection. After all, he was a kinsman with some rights. Men have been men before the Me Too era, and this situation could have easily been misunderstood by Boaz. Instead, he quickly concluded that Ruth's actions were praiseworthy. Boaz knew of Ruth from his previous experiences. Boaz already had indicated that he was aware of Ruth's conduct and character in the past, and it pronounced God's blessings upon her. 
In spite of Naomi's scheme, Boaz is seeing nothing in Ruth's words or deeds which would change his opinion of her. Indeed, he commends her as a woman of excellence, the highest praise that he could award any woman. Boaz recognized that she was not seeking merely to satisfy her physical desire. She could have found a younger man for that. Ruth was not seeking her own interests. She was seeking the interests of her mother-in-law, of her deceased husband, and of her father-in-law who was deceased. Because of this, Boaz vows to do everything in his power to honor her request. All this is happening in the middle of the night, and it is not safe to send Ruth back into the city unescorted in the middle of the night. He couldn't escort her back. That would raise a whole lot of questions. Boaz instructs Ruth to lie down until the morning, and before anyone else is up, they wake, and Boaz sends Ruth home, warning her not to tell anyone that a woman has been there. But he sends her home with grain, a generous portion of grain, in fact, all the grain that she could carry. This is symbolic of his commitment. Upon her arrival home, Ruth is met by her matchmaking mother-in-law, and Ruth tells all that has transpired, calling attention to the barley that Boaz has sent with her. With this gift from Boaz to Naomi, Naomi is confident that Boaz will follow up on his commitment and see that this matter is brought to a conclusion. She knows Boaz well enough to know that he will make sure the matter is settled before the end of the day. That's the lesson for this week. You have a great week. Bye.